Hello, this is Barton McLean, welcoming you to the world of my sequencer playpen, written in Max MSP. Before going further with this demo, I would urge you to take a peek at the sequencer playpen description from the manual available on my website listed below, since there is not enough room here to show the complete screen. The concept is very simple. Three independent MIDI tracks, each with 24 notes. The beauty is in the almost infinite and often unique ways these are manipulated. Toward the top of the screen, note the three tracks and also note the status toggles and LEDs of each of the 24 steps. The toggles tell you whether the increment is muted or not. The top uh, buttons tell you if the track is playing or not. Each time a note plays, it turns black. And the red LEDs tell you whether you've got an alternate pitch or a normal pitch, which I'll describe later. Before I record notes into the playpen, a little preparation. At the far left in the middle of your screen, note the purple track open for edit area. Watch as I press the D key on my Macintosh keyboard, which will toggle track A on and off. I will leave it on, meaning that all orange color controls will respond to track A only. In the play section to the right, I will toggle T to pl place track A in the through mode. Allowing my MIDI keyboard controller to echo out to the playpen's MIDI output to a synthesizer, which happens to have a piano sound. Now with the controller keyboard able to control the MIDI synthesizer, I test to make sure it's working. Good. So now we're all set to record a track. This is along the lines of what often is called step recording. Looking at the play section, I first place it into record mode by pressing the letter R on the Mac keyboard. Going to the red record section in the lower left, I first set the increment number I wish to start recording on. Let's set it to 1. As it's colored yellow, that means that I set it with the mouse, unlike orange controls which are often set with a Mac keyboard. I can start at any increment without affecting other increments, but we'll begin with the first one. Now with the controller keyboard set on through so I can hear what I'm recording, I will slowly play a series of 24 notes beginning with the octave below middle C. going up the chromatic scale. The note is not actually recorded into the playpen until the key is released. Note as I record these notes, the increment accessed appears in the large green number box besides the A track up above the incre in the increment panel. To actually play the track, I use the MIDI keyboard playing the low C for track A, or C sharp 1 for B, or D1 for track C. So I press C1 to play the track. Before I do, I shall disengage the through mode so as to hear only the track playing, not what I'm about to play on the controller keyboard. Here we go with... Okay. Now I'm going to play the track. Note that while the track is playing, each note or increment turns black at the increment panel. While this track is playing, find the orange tempo section. I will adjust the tempo by moving MIDI controller number 7. The number in the blue box reflects the controller value. The number in the green box reflects the actual tempo in milliseconds between notes. Looking a little to the right in the yellow patterns bandwidth section, I will move controllers 5 and 6 to adjust the bandwidth of increments actually playing. Watch these. Uh, 
two sliders move as I adjust the bandwidth of the track. Now under the manipulate section below, the second orange number boxes say reset resume after right here. By toggling the M key when I play the track, each subsequent play command can either start at the beginning of the selected increment bandwidth or we resume where it left off. I'm gonna show both sections here, both instances here. This is the reset. Now it's the resume. Now, find the yellow number box at the left, designated Alternate Pitch Transposition. We'll move it to plus 12 with the mouse. Nothing happens yet. Just to the right of this yellow box is called the Keyboard Effects Alternate on and off. Pressing the U key engages this. When engaged, the octaves C2 through B3 toggle the increment associated with the key on and off so that the increment is skipped. Watch the increment paddle at track A as notes are played or skipped. A similar event happens with controller keyboards notes C4 through B5. In this case, instead of the notes being skipped, the keyboard toggles between a normal pitch seen in bright red LEDs or alternate pitch seen in darkened LEDs. Just watch the LEDs and watch the, as you know, the alternate is now uh, an octave higher. Watch this. In the middle of the manipulate section, look at the random velocity at random duration. As I press the C key, watch how this affects the sound. We're having random velocities all the way from almost zero to maximum. Now a similar technique is employed for random duration by toggling the X key. Here I just arrange the duration with the mouse. Now as I enable the tiny yellow link toggle watches, I can move the velocity or duration in tandem. Then going between the J and K keys, I reverse the direction of the track and play with it a little bit.
Before I explore further, I shall hit the main preset number one with the mouse to restore the settings to a previously neutral mode. Watch, you'll probably see some of the numbers move. Now we're ready to make this very dull chromatic scale into something more interesting. 